want to put your hands together just like this right here. If you're glad trouble don't last always, it's a little quiet in here. Hallelujah. Can y'all make a noise? Trouble don't last always. So. I'm so glad. Can I get a witness in here? Yeah. Trouble don't last always. So. I'm so glad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trouble don't last always. So. Trouble don't last always. Listen, can I say this verse right here? Minister to your heart. He may not come when you want him to, but he's on time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In times of trouble, guess what? I found him to be a friend of mine. Oh, my. When storm clouds rise in your life, guess what? He'll be there. Yes, he will. Be there. Right there. Yes. Every one of your burdens, I know the Lord will help you to bear all of them. Here we go. I'm so glad. Get happy in here today. Cause trouble don't last all the way. Come on. Don't last I'm gonna say that verse one more time. Is that all right? He may not come when you want him to, yeah, but he's on time. In times of trouble, guess what? Found him to be a friend of mine. Oh my, yeah. When storm clouds rise in your life, I know he'll be there. Yes, he will. Be there. Glory to God. Every one of your burdens, I know the Lord will help you to bear.
last always. Trouble don't last always in us. Trouble don't last always. Oh yeah. Trouble don't last. No, no, no. Trouble don't last always in us. Trouble don't last always in us. Trouble don't last always. Yeah. Trouble don't last, last away. Trouble don't last away. Trouble don't last away. Come on with the resounding sound. Trouble don't last. Trouble don't last away. No, 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 no. Mercy endureth forever. People from every nation. 
you are, yeah. Hey. So good, so good, yeah. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yeah. So good, so good, 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 yeah.
are free. There's no guilt or shame or condemnation because we have an advocate who fights for us. I was sharing with the first congregation that we might not understand on this earth how deep and how wide and how high his love is for us. But sometimes we get a glimpse of his beautiful and loving and forgiving eyes. Just one look is all it takes. And I'm undone in his presence. I am whole in his presence. I am filled in his presence. My identity is in him. One look. Hallelujah. Just one look, just one touch is all I need to experience you. Thank you, Jesus. right here let's lift our hands in adoration of our father yes. oh Jesus we thank you oh God you are the most beautiful you are the holy God the majestic king the royal father who's seated in heavenly places Lord we thank you Just 
dearest father, my closest friend, most beautiful. You are the one for me. Shout dearest father, you're my closest friend, you're most beautiful.
the bones are rising. Your spirit is moving. Your spirit is moving. Your spirit is moving. Your spirit is moving. His spirit is moving. His spirit is moving. His spirit. alignment with Jesus right here right now just you and Jesus Jesus I surrender my heart Jesus I want to be in alignment with your will Jesus I want to be in alignment with your way Jesus I want to walk on purpose Jesus I want to live on purpose Jesus it's you that my heart desires Jesus it's you come on lift up the volume right here Jesus is you Jesus is you it's only you God Over the stage, I see a vision of green pastures. And with those green pastures, on those green pastures are three golden doors, five golden doors. The names on those doors are healing, deliverance, greater glory, 
restoration, and the last door says finances. And in this atmosphere, the reason why those are green pastures is because they're easily attained in this atmosphere. Above in this sanctuary here, there has been since December 27th, a stirring of the waters. And it has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And at this point, it is outside the boundaries of these walls. And in that stirring of the waters, I asked the Lord, why does that look different than it typically does? Why is it a darker blue than I would typically see for a, a stirring of the waters? And what he was saying to me was that not only is it a normal stirring of the waters, but we are deeper, down deeper into the healing virtue that he is, that is flowing. And the stirring angel that he has stirring the angel this time is not a typical stirring angel. It is an angel with, with fiery garments and it's an angel of restoration and purification. And at this time is a calling to deeper purification and deeper sanctification. And it says here in John 5, verse 4, For an angel of the Lord went down at an appointed season into the pool and moved and stirred up the water. And whoever then first after stirring up the water stepped up was cured of whatever disease with which he was afflicted. And that says whatever disease in which he was afflicted. And I'm hearing where people are thinking that whatever they are dealing with is something that is light and it's necessary. And they're dealing with things that are age, is considered age appropriate. And they're saying that this healing is not for me or that healing is not for me. And they're grateful for others, but passing over themselves. And at this point in time, God is saying, whatever the affliction is, healing is here today. I heard the spirit of the Lord say for the next seven days that he wants you to come into agreement with what he is doing in your life by faith. And I saw a Hebrews 11 and 30 that says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. I don't know if this looks like you going on a fast or you pulling away from things that you know you don't need to have your hands on, but I hear the Lord in alignment with what Lisa said to come into agreement and to jump into the stirring of what he's doing in this present time. Do not miss the move of the spirit in this hour. And I saw the Lord telling us to just move around this place, speaking in tongues just for a few moments, to come into agreement so you take this home with you and do not leave this for seven days. It doesn't matter what it looks like, whatever he's calling you to do for faith, in seven, in seven days, I believe that the Lord is going to do something mighty in the lives of his people today. So just walk around, get out of the pews for a moment, speak in tongues for just a few seconds to come into faith agreement with what he is saying. Get out of your seat, even if it's for somebody else. There's something that needs to move in the lives of these people. Spirit is moving. 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 Spirit
Steps of faith, steps of faith. Spirit's moving. Spirit's moving. Spirit's moving. Spirit's moving. Changes in every step. Changes is every step. Changes in every step. Changes in every step. The spirit is moving. The spirit is moving. The spirit is moving. The spirit. Breakthroughs in the step. Breakthroughs in the step. Change is in the step. Healing's in the step. Deliverance is in the step. Deliverance is in the step. Deliverance is in the step. Your healing is in the step. Your breakthrough 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 is in this step. Your healing is in the 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 step. Deliverance 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 is in the step. Increase is in the step. Increase is in the step. Increase is in the step. Your 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 change 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 is in the step. Spirit is moving. Spirit is moving. Spirit is moving. volume pray in the spirit come on about 30 more seconds pray in the holy ghost pray in the holy ghost come on lift up your voice on high they're tired of a whole shot lift up your voice on high yeah they're ready about so far back Sharia ma soria ma yaraba sofa
floodgates are open. The 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 floodgates are open. Drink it in. The floodgates are open. Drink it in. The floodgates are open. Drink it in. The floodgates are open. 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 Open up, open up. The floodgates are open. 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 Somebody open your mouth in this place today. Open your mouth in this place today. And give him the praise he deserves. 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 I want, you to, I want you to reach over and elbow somebody and tell them, say, promise is granted. <laughs> promise is granted. Come on. Promise is granted. Promise is granted. Get out of your seat and tell somebody, promise is granted. Come on, go find three people and tell them. The promise is granted. What did God say? 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 The promise is granted. The promise is granted. The promise is granted. Your 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 promise is granted. Give your voice if we receive that in the house of the Lord. Declare, I receive that in the house of the Lord. Come on, declare, I receive that in the house of the Lord. I receive that in the house of the Lord. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. 
He yes and amen. Yeah. 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 He yes and amen. He yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. It's yes and amen. Yes and amen. Your promise, your will. Yes and amen. Your promise, your will. Yes and amen. Your promise, your will. Yes and amen. Your kingdom come. Yes and amen. Your will be done. Yes and amen. Your kingdom come. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. He said it's yes and amen. Yes and amen. He said it's yes and amen. Yes and amen. He said it's yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Somebody give a shout out and a praise in here. If you receive the promises of God, if you receive the prophetic word. Hey, hey. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Oh, 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 yes and amen. We say yes and amen. Yes and amen. We say yes and amen. Yes and amen. We say yes to your will. Yes and amen. Amen to your way. Yes and amen. We say yes to your will. Yes and amen. Amen to your way. Yes and amen. Yes to your will. Yes and amen. Amen to your way. Yes and amen. We say yes to your will. Yes and amen. We say yes to your will. Yes and amen. We say amen to your way. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. It's yes to your will. Yes and amen. Yes to your will. Yes and amen. Amen to your way. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Oh. Come on, open your mouth to the Lord. Open your mouth to the Lord. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. 
Words of melody to your beloved. Words of melody to your beloved. Words of melody to your beloved.
worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Just one hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Holy. The lamb. What is the lamb? What is the lamb? What is the lamb? You are. You are holy. You are holy. Are you Lord? Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. You are. You are. Somebody bless the Lord in this place on the way to your seat today. Holy Worthy is the Lord our God. 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 Holy, holy. Amen. To the ministry is being released right now. Holy, holy, are you, Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Holy are you, Lord God, for my worthy is the land, worthy is the land, worthy is the land, you are holy all by yourself, all by yourself, are you, Lord God. Lord, thanks on the way to your seat right now. Welcome to Center for Manifestation. Woo! We believe this is a season for the manifestation of the sons of God. I know that God has purpose to do something in this moment for you. I know that God wants to do the impossible in someone's life today. As the prophets begin to prophesy today, 
The Bible said if you receive them, you receive a prophet's reward. You don't have to measure up. You don't have to make God any promises. In these simple moments of faith and worship, somebody shout, I have the faith that takes. Like the woman with the issue of blood. She just believed something. She didn't earn it. She couldn't deserve it. She just believed something. It was an act of God. It wasn't based on merit. She didn't ask for crowd approval. Somebody shout, I just believed something. So if you would, for just a moment, we're moving on. Max, Sarge, and Michael to come to dedicate the baby today. But if you would, for just a moment, if you didn't receive what you were expecting when the prophets were prophets, I want you to take about 30 seconds and like the woman with the issue of blood, we press in. We press in. Like the blind man waited patiently we press in through the crowd suddenly a touch from heaven Jesus came and rescued her suddenly Jesus touched her life and shifted her physical condition suddenly Jesus touched her life and changed everything suddenly. suddenly. Somebody shout, unceremonially, but suddenly. So wherever you are, wherever you are, in need of the touch of God, just receive, just receive, just receive, just receive. I'm glad that the prophets were talking about the, the fact that God is, God is poised to do something really supernatural in your life. For the last four weeks or so, every single week I've been getting testimonies of people that were healed in our worship. And I believe that's because God is here and God is doing what God does when a people let God be God. How many know that if you'll simply receive God at the level he's revealing himself, tell somebody he'll do it for you. Come on, tell somebody he will do it for you. He will do it for you. But now, if you got any pre-qualifications or merit system or anything like that in your mind, all of that stuff stands in the way of being able to receive from God. There's a song we said, I don't, I couldn't have earned it. I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. <laughs> oh, y'all in the mood for it, huh? Y'all done move for it. <laughs> Elmo, somebody tell me it's free. It's free. It comes with the package. Healing is the children's bread. He takes light of, he takes the light of your deliverance. Please deny, deny, and I could earn. Don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God.
Take a moment as a faith family. She's so precious. She's a miracle baby, too, right? Huh? You actually laid hands on me, <laughs> and I had her not too long after. I'm sure it had less to do with my hands. Than <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Y'all know faith without works no, is dead. Faith without works. I'm, I'm thinking Michael had a part in it. <laughs> Don't blame it on me. This is a miracle baby. This is the baby that wasn't supposed to be. Come on. Look, somebody tell them, if you need proof, God is a miracle worker. Let's look right here. So today, I know I don't need to tell you all how important it is, imperative it is, that you walk in a way that you come at Christ so that this child will see in your lives what it means to serve the true and living God. Who are the godparents? Godparents, amen. You a godparent, or are you here to dance? On no, dance, she an aunt. Okay, <laughs> praise God. Godparents, godparents are here. What you are saying is that God forbid if something were to happen to Michael and Saj, we would take this child as our own, bring and raise her to an age of adulthood. So I want to admonish you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be mindful of the vows and the commitments that you make concerning the welfare of this child. Amen. Amen. 
Father, we thank you today that you have blessed this family with baby Melody. We thank you right now that she was born through unusual circumstances to evidences of the hand of God upon the life of her mother and father. And even as it's through your sovereign will that she came into this earth, it is by your sovereign will that she will be kept for your purpose in this earth. I say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we commit this child for your safekeeping, for your coverage, for your guidance. Think that even now you are orchestrating the affairs of her life. You're ordaining all of her friendships, companionships, and relationships. You are bringing her by your sovereign will into all that you have purpose. We declare as a congregation, no weapon formed against her shall prosper. We thank you for the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, that has been proclaimed over her life. We thank you for God-fearing parents and their example. We ask that you would use their example, Father, in order to inculcate values concerning the Word of God into her heart and her mind, so that not only will she serve the Lord all the days of her life, but she will be mindful of you and mindful of your will. Father, help her parents to teach her the fear of the Lord. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that even as we commit baby Melody to you, that you will cover her, keep her, guard her, guide her, and bring her into the fullest of your intention. We declare over her life that no weapon formed against her shall prosper, and the purpose of the Lord shall fully be realized in her life, in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. I want to also tell the family, I mean, we have a couple of our prophets here in case they have a word for you concerning your child please follow them as well amen amen we honor the lord <clears throat> we honor the lord vickers while you're here we we want to take a moment you know it is uh yes He rededicated his life to Christ, and he also wants to become a covenant partner here at CFM. Amen. God bless you. Yes. Lewis, where are you from? From Tampa. How'd you find out about us? Empowerment House. But through the Empowerment House. Lewis Williams. Man, we're so glad to have you, man. Today is a new beginning for you, Lewis. Today is the church, stretch your hands this way. Pastor Ryder, put your hands on the church, stretch your hands this way. Father, oh God, oh God. Lewis, you need to understand that God has not changed his mind concerning the calling that is upon your life. Strange circumstances that you've gone through in life, the ramification of certain choices that you have made do not nullify the intention of God concerning your life. Now I declare that within the next six to 12 months, not only not only are you going to reclaim your calling in God, but God is going to do such a radical work in your life that you will not even be able to recognize yourself because of the transformation that will take place at the hand of our God. God has not changed his mind concerning you. The things that have been prayed over your life, the things that have been declared over your life by God-fearing people, we join we come into agreement with those things that have been prayed over your life by God-fearing people. I see an old woman that has labored, labored, had, had labored to see the will of God made manifest in your life. And if God is going to do it for nobody else, God is going to do it for her. And God is going to do it through you. Now, Father, we receive Lewis Williams as a part of this ministry. Thank you for receiving him into your family. We ask you to cover him and guide him in all that you have purpose for his life. In Jesus' matchless name. Amen. We want to get some information from you. We ain't going to wait till later. We want to get some information from Lewis and then come on back. Actually, we just hang out. All right. Y'all, make sure y'all get some information for Lewis today. Lewis Williams. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. Hang out, Lewis. Well, listen. You know, how many know it's, it's, it's the best way to serve is to serve in anonymity? Look at somebody tell them anonymity. 
How many know that what God, what you do in secret, God rewards you openly? And so that's what this moment is about. Elder Vickers wants to highlight Elder Vickers and Deacon want to highlight someone today. Uh, yes, we want to recognize our Deacon of the Year today uh, for his outstanding work uh, and and and. <laughs> And commitment uh, to the ministry and the body of Christ. Uh, no matter what you put him in front of him, he does it with excellence. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, this year's uh, Deacon of the Year is uh, Deacon Alvin Bullock. Give it up! Come on! I-I tell you, He's, he's over our transportation, and he, he's, one of the, he's a, a great example of a servant in the house because this is, this is the highest officer in the church is a servant. And I want to say thank you, man, for transportation, for helping Mother Ramsey during the abridgment uh, time. And also, too, uh, he's been placed senior director over the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the drug recovery in-house. So, so if there's anyone that you are struggling still with substance abuse, get up under, get up under his ministry. And if those that been there and you know how it is and you want to help him with that ministry, it's the in-house. There's a lot of people hiding and struggling with substance abuse. And it's right in here, man. So we came up with this to give it this, um, this ministry to him, him and his wife, okay? But also, too, I, um, I got a little something for you. Make sure you take your wife to Applebee's. Right. You like that. Right. There you go. Right. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Come on, let's give it up for the Deacon of the Year, Brother Alvin. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Well, you know, today is our Vision Sunday. Uh, I'm sure. Hey, thank you for being excited about the Vision and Manifestation Worldwide. Amen. Uh, I want to remind all of you on Vision Sunday, uh, oh, come on, please remember to turn in your manifesto. Go to centerformanifestation.com, turn in your manifesto today. If you are a partner with this ministry, I have a fundamental need to know that you are about your father's business, so I want to know who you led to Christ or how God is using you uniquely to impact lives or what are you getting out of being a part of Center for Manifestation. And then also, where, where are the ministry department leaders? Raise your hand, department leaders. Department leaders. Right. Everybody with their hand up needs to turn in a report today. I have a fundamental need to know what's going on in your areas, please, uh, as well. Also, new partners who have completed our orientation process, we want to acknowledge them as well. Right. Center for Manifestation. Certificate of completion presented to the following. Congratulations on new partnership orientation given the seventh day of April, 2024. The first person is Kirby Nelson. Kirby. That boy cleaner than the board of health. And keep it going for Sister Tarshe Nelson. Tarshe, his wife. Thank God for you. Elias Collins. Elias, his son. Raphael Collado. Raphael. David Damon Jr. David. God bless you, Raphael. 
God bless you, man. Raphael, a married man. His wife is Marcel. She made, all right. I, man, when they come in looking this good, I got to let them know they got a wife. I got to let them know. Stay right there, Raphael. All right, Brother David, who is also married. Married man. Come over here. He's a married, he's a married man. Natasha Berry. Right. Natasha. Come on, let's give it up for Natasha. And Terica Hicks. And Terica. Isn't that awesome? God bless you, Natasha. And Terica. God bless you. She already bringing people to church. And Terica already being an evangelist. And Brianca Jackson. Brianca. Bree. Brianca, Brianca, amen. Bree, I call her Bree, just Brianca, amen. God bless you, Bree. We're so glad, amen. Church, would you please give a little thanks and praise for our brand new partners? Finish their orientation, learned about our vision, made sacrifices, came out to understand who we are and what we do so they can be an instrumental part of it. What is it time for them to do? Time to plug in. As you guys know, we don't believe that there are extra parts to the body. So we hope and pray that you will hear God and plug into the areas in which God has called you here. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Raphael, where's Marcel? Where's your wife? Amen. God, that's his wife right there. Marcel, just so y'all know. I'm just letting you know. I see a few people sitting over there, on, get close to them, normally don't sit on that side. That's why I got to finish. <laughs> also, take a moment, if you would. So one of the things that we're doing right now, raise your hand if you're a part of Manifestation Worldwide, if you're a partner here, all right? All right, so that's nearly everyone here. We need updated information on you. We, current, we send out things that you need to know, you know, uh, Jolene and, and her family do a wonderful job over the apartment house. We try to notify you and we have free stuff here for you and all that. But if we don't have your contact information, we cannot notify you. So if you would point your phone, uh, point your phone at the screen, click on the link that it comes up and please give us your current information right now. You can do it right through the QR code. So please do it right now. We're going on a drive. We're trying to get everybody updated and in our integrated into our our new system, so we need you to do that right away. Would you do that, please? This is also on our partners page. If you're a partner and you're not on our partners page, raise your hand. You're not on our FBC, I'm sorry, our Facebook partner page. Not. All right, so we have information that comes for it there. This is also on the partners page. We need you to do this and update it for your entire family. All right, y'all got that? So please help us out with that as well want to remind you that on Vision Sunday, I know that you guys, I could tell that many of you are committed to God with your tithe. Somebody shout, I honor God, I honor God. As, my as my source. The way that we honor God as our source is through our tithe. Amen. Simple as that. We're not under the law. We don't need rules. Neither did Abraham, Isaac, nor Jacob. We give by faith. But the way that we honor God as our source is through our tithe and through our offering. Amen. One of the things that, since I came in the body of Christ in 92, read my Bible by 93, came out of debt by 94, this has been 30 years of debt-free living for me, 30 years. But I have never spent the tithe on anything but the tithe. I believe in giving. I believe in helping the poor. I believe that's a pattern of breaking the stronghold of lack off of our lives. I believe that if you commit to God with your resources, tell us about it, you'll never be broke another day in your life. Now, I mean, no. Either of you tithe and give, tell somebody you still got to be a good steward. Now, i never forget, I met with a lady some time ago. She said, apostle, well, I was pastor then. She said, pastor, uh, actually, she called me elder. Elder said, I heard what y'all say about this tithe and stuff, but I don't see no increase. I said, bring me your budget. So I sat down with her and went over her budget. And this, this particular person at this particular time, she was making about forty thousand dollars more the second year after tithing than she did the year before and i said i said you got to increase you spend it hello somebody a forty thousand dollar increase in one year you got the increase but here's what happened 
Your lifestyle expanded to the increase, Parkinson's law. You were not being mindful of how you manage your money, and so you just lived all the way out to what was coming in. Y'all got that? Say, I got to be a good steward. Amen? So it's not enough to just give your tithe and offering. You got to be a good steward as well. So we want to remind you of that little caveat when you're considering what God is doing in and through your life. want to remember, remind you also quickly that on this Saturday coming, uh, uh, Deacon Pickens is asking, right here, raise your hand, Deacon, is asking the men to come out, 8 a.m. on Saturday coming, to help with the campus cleanup. There are 13 buildings on our campus. There's 15 lots. We have a lot of stuff around here that we need some uppick on. So Deke is in, is in charge of that. I heard he's going to feed you. So he's, he's not asking you to come out for long. So all the olds that said, I would just come to the church and clean because I'm such a humble, loving service of Jesus. This is your moment. This is your moment. So please see him today as that is going on this next Saturday coming at 8 a.m. Amen. Praise God. I want to also remind you all that we are one month away from FBCM Convocation 2024. Amen. Some of you may not know this, but we are the mother church of an organization of churches, parachurches, and businesses that we cover. And so all of them are going to be coming in for graduations. And we're licensing ministers and we're ordaining fivefold people, elders and deacons, etc. So hopefully you guys are planning on being here each night. 16th, 17th, and 18th. It's one of the only multi-night things. If you notice, we don't do a lot of stuff here, right? We have so many things going on in our departments, and we don't do a lot of conferences and all that other kind of stuff. And I thank God you don't need a, a brand name to hear God. I thank God for this church because you all are responsive to the leaders in the church, and you are responsive to the things that are put together for the church. So put your, put your hand together for you that you're not a part of brand name Christianity. No, that's a good thing. That's a good thing because there are a lot of places where you can't get people to come out for nothing unless you invite a brand name in. Tell somebody, this ain't that house. So we do thank God for you all. As you prepare, stand if you would, as we prepare to sow our tithe, offer ministries. We're going to give our faith confession. Where to unwed people, where to unmarried people, especially men. I wrote a new book called Unripe, The Journey to Becoming Husband Material. Every man you know needs this book to, to be able to determine and ascertain whether they're ripe enough, ripe enough to be in a real relationship. Please get copies of this book. They are available in our gift shop. We want to remind you also that our cafe is open as well. Got a lot of stuff going on here regularly around manifestations worldwide. Elbow somebody tell them this is not a Sunday church. We open seven days a week meeting the needs of our community. And so when you sow into manifestations worldwide, you are sowing into good ground. Amen? Anybody into mission work? Raise your hand if you've ever been into mission work. Mission work. All right. This is a missionary organization. When you sow into manifestations worldwide, we are currently building a campus in India where we plan on taking our three orphanages and putting them all on the same campus, putting our pastoral training. We oversee about 70-some pastors. We're going to build a training center for those pastors. We're going to build residences for our staff there. And when we send people there, they'll go to those residences as well. This is a missionary organization as well. So remember that when you sow your tithe and sow your offering. Amen? Faith confession. This is my seed. It opens the doors of my life to prosperity. It is a proof of my commitment to God in this vision. I give it in faith. And the vine should give me fruit and the ground should give me increase. We are dead and mortgage free and without lack always having more than enough to minister to the needs and desires of our family, our partners, uh, of our families, our partners who are in need in our fellowship, our partners in Africa, Asia, and Europe. Furthermore, we are well equipped and abundantly funded to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God to the ends of the earth. We now lose holy angels assigned to the welfare and vision of Manifestation Worldwide Inc to orchestrate divine connections, intersections, and interactions that will release into our possession the multiplied millions of dollars and resources needed to build Manifestation City, a place of transition for all people. And we vow to use these funds for the advancement of kingdom purposes and for the glorification of your name and ear. Now, before you give, 
I'm going to ask the screen team to put up one more placard real quick. I want to show you something you're going to shout over because we have just this week received our building permit to build, to build Manifest Veterans Village is becoming a reality. Literally, this past week we got our building permit. Tell somebody, we don't go. To build our units to house veterans three doors down at 3110 East Lake Avenue. I got to tell you all, this is the work of Jesus himself. We've done a lot of things in this neighborhood. We've done a lot of things. We've built buildings. It, it was easier building a million dollar building than getting this permit. It was easier doing a lot of stuff. This right here is the hardest thing we've ever had to do in 23 years of ministry because of all that we went through, all the comments, all the changes. It's like the city gave us extra stuff to do. One of the reasons I, I didn't keep talking about it is because one of the things I've learned, and we're going to talk about it today in our message, right? Tell somebody, when you're going through adversity, use very few words. Shut your mouth. Stay in prayer. Keep your confession in alignment with God's will. I was told, I was literally told by somebody here in the neighborhood that someone here in the neighborhood said, oh, they ain't going to build that thing, right? Literally. So I took those words to God. And I said, Lord, they said you can't do it. God's doing it. Amen? God's doing it. So now the only thing left to do, there's only really only one thing left to do. At this point, we can literally put a shovel in the ground and start now. But the only thing left to do, right, when we got everything squared away and made all the revisions that the city wanted for the plan to work for our neighbors, you know, you got to have stuff. I got to spend money for my neighbors. Y'all know that? Uh, some right-of-way stuff and so on and so forth. Some of the numbers that came back from our contractor, I didn't like. So I'm trying to get them to change their numbers or I'm going to change contractors because I want to make sure this church gets the very best deal in getting it done. We got the money, but I want to make sure that y'all get what I'm saying. It's, it's all part of the financial process. As steward, I got to make sure we, we get this done uh, the way we should affordably and, and within the means that we currently have. Amen? But let's give the Lord a thing. Won't God do it? I want you to tell somebody nothing is impossible with God. Come on if we will, soaring your tired off and ministry support into the house of the Lord.
upon the lives of those who contribute to this ever-evolving, ever-expanding work. We ask, Lord God, your graciousness upon every business supporter that contributes to this cause. Now, Father, as we prepare ourselves to enter into a new season of instruction, we thank you, Lord God, that you have given us grace to see things through the eyes of God, through the eyes of Christ. As we work throughout this month, as we work throughout this month, through these instructions, consummate optimists. We ask in Jesus' matchless name that you will lay a foundation for unmitigated joy in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Philippians chapter 4 in your Bibles. Turn there real quick. Thank you, praise team. Philippians 4. And, uh, Philippians chapter 4. Man, if you missed first service today, y'all, excuse my voice. I did a lot of hollering yesterday as I coached the winning team um, in volleyball at our leadership outing. I had to coach the winning team, so I did a lot of hollering. Where's, where's that winning team at? Y'all, y'all, where the winning? Okay, the winning team. A lot of hollering. I had to do a lot of shouting. <laughs> Says the loser. If you missed first service today, one of our sons in the house, Jonathan Hollinshed, ministered a powerful word. Ask somebody, what you looking at? It was such a powerful opening to our series, The Consummate Optimist, because he talked about 
of the fact that you got to be mindful about what you watch, what you lay your eyes on. Amen. Tell somebody, the devil trying to get your eyes. He's always working an angle. He's always trying to get into our lives and to carry out his agenda in our lives. So it was a powerful starter to this series. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, the consummate optimist making a case for unmitigated joy. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy. Watch what he says. Think about such things. Y'all got that? Today's lesson in our new series, The Pitfall of Negative Reporting. The Pitfall of Negative Reporting. Negative reporting by definition, is the act of presenting information. Somebody shout, how I present information matters. You know, there are many right now that have a hard time with motivation, but because you don't understand the connection between information and motivation. Hello? Am I in the right crowd? I don't have another one. Many of you right now struggle with motivation. Somebody shout, motivation is not the problem. The problem is you don't understand the connection between information and motivation. You got that? You know, when you're locked into a certain thing that you believe in God for, or you're standing in expectation of, you got to be very careful about who and what you allow to inform you. Because whoever informs you, your information can be a source of motivation or it can be a source of demotivation. So you got to be very mindful of what you allow to inform you when you're going through adversity or when you believe in God for something and it's taking a little longer than you thought it would take. Somebody shout, I'm not in control. You know, one of the things I told you all as we were fighting through this whole permitting process, right? And I told you all just enough to let you know what was going on, going on but not enough to depress you. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Why? Because sometimes people get overwhelmed with details. And when you're immature, you don't know how to process delay. And when you don't trust God, you have a hard time with delay. When you don't trust God, you'll have a hard time just being patient and walking through the process. So one of the things that I said is I only talk a lot with people that were instrumental to making it happen. So we were on the same page. But when it comes to those who have to just trust God and walk through the process, it's very important to say as little as possible when you're going through adversity. Y'all got that? It's more important to pray. It's more important to, to, to water your expectation with your words. Come on, tell somebody, water your expectation with your words. Your words should be fertilizer to what you are expecting. I want you to ask your neighbor, are your words fertilizing? your expectation or poisoning your expectations. There are many of us right now, you believe what God said. You sow the good seed of faith. You believe what God said. And do you turn right back around and you dig up your seed with the words that are coming out of your mouth? Got that? And the problem with being that way is that God won't help you. I just told y'all last week, Wednesday night, if you come to Wednesday night, I tell you why God won't help people that have two minds about anything. What does God call it when you have two minds about something? God said, you're double-minded, you're unstable in all your ways. Get out of my face. Don't ask me for nothing. Why? He demands singularity. Somebody shout, he demands singularity. Singularity of thought. You shall know the truth. The truth is singular. The truth is not plural. The truth is singular. God wants you to believe something, not everything. Y'all got that? I want you to tell somebody else all over the place. It's not a strategy for progress. Come on, tell your new neighbor. Say new neighbor. All over the place. It's not a strategy for progress. 
I told somebody recently, I was teaching and I was talking about counsel and receiving oversight from spiritual leaders. The Bible said you ought to know those who are over you in the Lord. If I'm over you, I have oversight. You know what that means? That means you don't ask my direction and then five of your friends' opinions. You don't understand oversight. You don't understand oversight. If oversight is real, then that means instruction that comes from oversight is not a suggestion. It's a direction. But nobody's going to make you do anything because God, God don't work past your will to get his will done. And good leadership won't either. I tell people, listen, now this is what I believe the Spirit of the Lord is saying you should do, right? This I believe you should do. Now do whatever you want. You know why I say that? You're not obligated to do anything I said. But you asked for the meeting. I prayed before the meeting. I invited God in this conversation. You got to decide if he spoke or not. Y'all got that? So be very selective. Say be selective. Whenever you're standing in expectation of anything, you got to be very selective about who you will allow to inform you. Does that make sense? Caleb and I were talking about Caleb and, and his wife, Simone, just had a new baby boy. By faith, by faith, right, son? They did it by faith, right? <laughs> but they, they had a new baby boy. Doctors say this, doctors say that. Every time we talk, we're like, no, we're talking about what we believe in God for. Isn't that right? That baby's already ahead of everything that was said already. Already. Elbow somebody and tell them from now on, all things should be coming out of your mouth. It's what you're grateful for and what you are believing God for. That's it. Nothing else. What are you grateful for? Say gratitude. gratitude. Keeps me in peace. Remember the Bible tells us, right? The Bible told us very, very clearly, perfect peace have they whose minds are stayed on him. Ask somebody, what are you grateful for? Ask somebody, what has God done for you lately? Come on, somebody. The reason that gratitude is so powerful is because gratitude is a leverage against depression. Who am I talking to right here? There's no way to be grateful and depressed. Who am I talking to? Say it with me. Gratitude is a leverage against depression. So why am I telling you only talk about what you're grateful for? Why? Because if you only speak of what you're grateful for, you will stay in a perfect peace that passes all knowledge. Now, only other things should be coming out of your mouth is what do you believe in God for? Like somebody, what do you believe in God for? Quit talking about what you got. Clearly, you don't want it. What are you believing God for? The just you'll live by? When you talk about what you believe in God for, you are establishing that your life is a life where faith lives. If faith lives in your life, God will live in your life. For without faith is what? You cannot please God if you talk fear, doubt, and unbelief. Who am I talking to? Some of y'all talk about your marriage like you don't want it. Then why are you in it? You talk about your job like you don't want it. You talk about your church like you don't want it. You talk about your relationships like you don't want it. And then you wonder why you have a hard time being in it because your license says you're in it, but your language says you're out of it. And you are conflicting your own soul because you're not speaking in agreement with what you are believing for and what you are expecting. Y'all got that? Only say only what I'm grateful for. Now, you know what? If you get up every day and just uh, write down two things, tell somebody just two doggone things. All right, you don't like writing, post it then, because clearly. <laughs> post two things you're grateful for. Watch what it does to the atmosphere of your life. Watch how it robs the devil of his ability to de demotivate you and depress you and drop loads on you. Notice the Bible said your only problem is not sin. You're supposed to lay aside every, every weight. Somebody shout, some stuff is weights. Some of the stuff you're carrying ain't a result of your sin. It's a weight. It's something you got on your shoulders that God told you to roll off. Anybody ever been to the gym? Did you pick up a weight? Did you put it back down? 
Because you can. Write this down. Any weight I picked up, I can put back down. Y'all got that? Say it with me. If I picked it up, I can put it down. So if you picked up a mindset that's got you weighed, weighed down, oh, you can put it down. You can change your mindset if you want to. You can change your attitude if you want to. You can change your outlook if you want to. You can change whether you got joy today or not if you want to. Ask me how. Rejoice. Anybody you sell drugs had to re-up? I'm in the right place up here. David, what does it mean, David, when you was out there in the street to re-up? What that mean? To reload again. To reload again, right? David White used to be one of the biggest drug dealers in this area. He used to be a menace to Mother Coney over there. A menace. She tried to pray him up out of here. She ran him right in the church. Tells me he got to re-up. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Somebody shout, I can, I can pull out of my spirit. Oh, my God. There's a wellspring of joy on the inside of you. But you got to get out of your mind and you got to pull. Tell somebody, drop the bucket in the well and pull it up. Anybody notice? Anybody notice when we start praying in the spirit, what happened to you? Everything starts. <laughs> Hey, y'all hear y'all, right? Isn't that true? We start praying in the Holy Ghost, then you get lighter? Tells my, I dropped my bucket in the well. Rejoice. All you did was rejoice. You got to re-up. Got to fill up again. Rejoice. Y'all got that? You're only depressed if you want to be. You understand that? And you're only distracted if you haven't decided what you should be focused upon. So now watch this now. So... The, uh, the act, what is negative reporting? I'm not negative. I'm just, I'm just saying, though, I keep it real. Yeah, you keeping it real is depressing you, though. How is keeping it real working out for you? The act of presenting information, news, or findings in a pessimistic, critical, or unfavorable way. Now, I want to start right there for just a moment, okay? Because you can talk about things in such a way that they favor you. Tell somebody how you tell the story of your life. Come on, tell somebody how you tell the story of your life will either elevate you or eliminate you. Some of you don't understand, you're doing your own stuff. You don't even need a devil. Everything the enemy would do to you, you already doing. Tell somebody the devil wants to poison your life. Come on, tell somebody the devil wants to poison your life. And he may be using your words to do it. He may be using the narrative, the slant, your, the way you rep Ask somebody, how do you report things? You know what defines whether you are a victor or a victim is how you tell the story of your life. Y'all got that? Ask somebody, how do you tell the story of your life? How do you report what goes on? And some of you, some of you always singing a somebody done somebody wrong song. Somebody done somebody wrong song. You know that song, Jim? You don't? All right. Try not to sing it. Well, pray for the rest of my salvation because I sing stuff like that. But now some of us, ask somebody, how do you tell... The story of your life. If you listen to how you... Now see, it's easy to be all joyful and praise the Lord up in here in this controlled environment. <laughs> Ask somebody, how do you normally tell the story of your life? How you tell the story of your life tells us whether you are the victim or whether you are the victor. Y'all got that? Say it with me. I get to narrate the story of my life in a way that favors me and ensures my future. I get to narrate the story of my life. People have a hard time with that man. Oh, you act like you ain't got no problem. Why should I be telling you about them? Tell somebody, you ain't finna pay none of my bills. You ain't finna, tell somebody, you ain't finna face none of my challenges. Y'all got that? If my husband getting on me, 
getting on my nerve. You ain't got to live with him. Oh. <laughs> So I, I, I go back to the maker, right? I, re, I go back to the maker and I tell her, I go back to the manufacturer and I tell the manufacturer all the problems that I have with this man that's malfunctioning. And then most of the time what I have discovered is that when I go to the manufacturer about my malfunctioning spouse, he tells me it's user error. Tells me you don't know what you're doing. The problem with tells me the problem with your spouse is you don't know what you're doing. Come on, tells me the problem with your spouse if you don't know what you're doing. Tells me the problem with your spouse is you don't know what you're doing. Use an error. <laughs> Isn't that right? Y'all got that? Say it with me again. It matters how I narrate the story of my experiences. You read, you read Psalms like, it was good that I was afflicted. That don't make sense, does it? Until you have been a benefactor of the outcome. Yeah. Oh! There's some stuff God would have never been able to trust me with had I not gone through all that trouble. Look at somebody and tell them, I graduated a whole lot of classes and I got a whole lot of degrees and a whole lot of stuff with God. Listen, I'm glad I went through it now. Because I would have never known God at the level that I do now had I not gone, I, not or not. And here's something else. Look at somebody tell them, I lost my fear of man. You better tell your neighbor, I lost my fear of man going through that last season of being manhandled. I lost my fear of man. Say it with me. It was good that I was afflicted. I didn't realize how much of a punk I was until I started facing the challenges I had to face. Anybody realize that you were a believer in theory? Uh, okay, only a couple people over here. Anybody realize you were a believer in theory? It's like those of you that were given a whole lot of marriage advice when you were single. You were, uh, you were, hello, all in theory. Here's what you got to do for a woman. Here's what you got to do for a man. None of that stuff worked now that you got married. <laughs> Joke's on you. Some of us, watch this now, but some of us are believers in theory and unbelievers in practice. Isn't that right? Ask somebody what you say on a daily basis. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, what you say on a daily basis. Jacob, you ain't got no neighbor? Find your neighbor. Look at, quit rebelling. Right in the middle row, rebelling. I'm looking right at you, looking at me saying nothing to nobody. Jacob, ask your neighbor. Say, so what you say on a daily basis, does it reflect fear or faith? Are you in fear or are you, do you talk more about what you are afraid of than what you believe in God for? Are you in fear, doubt, and unbelief and hoping for the best? Are you in fear, doubt, and unbelief? That don't make sense. You're in fear, doubt, and unbelief, hoping for the best. The just shall live by faith. Somebody shout, my job is to believe God. God's job is to be God. That's the arrangement. That's the arrangement. My job is to believe God. God's job is to be God. That's the arrangement. But I'll spend no time in fear, doubt, and unbelief. Does that make sense? I'm not staying up all night. Some of y'all like, I stay up all night praying. No, half the night you worrying and stressing. I'm believing what God said, and I'm going to sleep. I'll be 54 this year. You need a lot of rest to stay this handsome at 54 years old. So, you need a lot of work. You need a lot of sleep to stay this handsome. Tell me I need my beauty rest. Negative reporting. Focusing. I feel Tavis hating over there for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. Like, like he wants to say something slick. Focusing on aspects that highlight problems, drawbacks, failures or concerns rather than emphasizing the positive or beneficial elements. That's called negative reporting. Ask your neighbor, what are you bothered by that's benefiting you? Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
What are you bothered by that's, that's benefiting you? What have you had to do with what you were complaining about on your own? Oh, it ain't got quiet up in this Presbyterian church now. What are you bothering about? What are you bothered by that's benefiting you? Without it, you wouldn't even be in your right mind. Without it, you'd be alone yet again. Without it, without it, you'd be robbing Peter to pay Paul. What are, you, what are you bothered by that's benefiting you? That's what pessimism is all about. Somebody shout, it's not godly. Because you know what I found out about a pessimist? Pessimism is the mentality, right? Complaining is the language. Now, optimism is a mentality. Gratitude is the language. See how that works? And then you have people that will, they will boldly proclaim, I am grateful for everything God doing in my life. No, you're not. That's a retort. Because from the abundance of the heart, if you were grateful, you would have already been expressing gratitude. See? I am grateful. No, you're not. You're defending with that statement. You're not grateful. Because from the abundance of the heart, if you were grateful, you would have been expressing it already. See how that worked? If you were grateful, then it would not be that the only time you get a voice is when there is a problem. It's amazing how... You got a voice when there's a problem to report, when there's negativity to carry on. That's right. You know, like some of you right now, you never hear anything. Now you lurch and watch everything everybody doing on Facebook. But it isn't until somebody's got a negative slant about the church that you, amen, can't like, and now you show up. Now, all the other time, you watching our whole life. Ain't even saying happy birthday. Ain't even said congratulations. Ain't even said I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad for y'all. But the moment there's some negative to report. Oh, there's your voice. Oh, there's your voice. Pessimism is the mentality. Complaining is the language. How do I know that God hates pessimism? Because God hates complaining. And complaining comes from a pessimistic mentality. Y'all got that? All right, let's move on. Let me get into my message. Don't be negative about how long this message is going. You could be in that car with that broke down AC. At least the AC working in here. <laughs> Something to be grateful for. All right. Let's talk about the negative repercussions of pessimism, all right? Because there's some of us that just be saying, though, and just be keeping it real, but don't realize the damage you're doing to yourself through pessimism. Number one, number one, the cells of the human body turn on the bearer of pessimism. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. If you are a pessimistic person, the cells of the human body turn on the bearer. Because pessimism, turn to Proverbs 14.30. To, uh, pull Proverbs 13.40 up for me real quick. Uh, pessimism comes from a bitter soul. Y'all got that? Proverbs 13, uh, 14.30. Okay. Oh, they pull it up. Real quick. I'll find it. It's up there. A sound heart is the life of the flesh but envy rottens the bone. Or bitterness is another, is another translation. Somebody shout, bitterness causes bone cancer. Bitterness affects your biology. A pessimistic person is a bitter person. Bitterness affects your biology. It doesn't just come out of your mouth, it goes into your cells. It messes with the physiology. It messes with your body. Y'all got that? You know why? This is why some people, I'm not saying you, this is why some people, right, 
they have these random pains and these constant problems and they go to the doctor and they're like, we don't see nothing. Ain't nothing wrong with you. And you're like, well, I know and I should, right? And why? Listen to me. Listen to me. If you're the person that goes to the doctor and they find nothing wrong with you and you got pains, you got this going on and all this other kind of stuff, and you know you're pessimistic and you know you're bitter and you know you're a negative reporter, the, this is a check engine light for you. Because what happens is this, when it's bitter and it's in your language and pessimism and it's in your language, the going to the doctor, that's the check engine light to say, hey, change the way, change your narrative on this, right? If you don't change the narrative, it manifests and materializes into something, something sickening. It materializes into something sickening. Y'all understand that? All right, so I'm going to give you real quick some research. All right? I'm going to read the article for you real quick. In their neuroscience experience, experiment, do words hurt? Maria Richer and collaborating scientists monitored subjects' brains, response to auditory and imagined negative words. During this process, they discovered painful or negative words increase implicit processing, IMP, which is the subgenial anterior cingulate cortex, SACC. Put frankly, or in layman's terms, their study proved that negative words release stress, anxiety inducing hormones in the subjects. Additionally, a study found increased levels of anxiety in children associated with higher rates of negative talk, killing your kids, being negative to them. According to the study's abstract, these results suggest negative self-talk plays a role in the generation or maintenance of anxiety in normal children. Ultimately, negative words, whether spoken, heard, or thought, not only cause situational stress, but, but also contribute to long-term anxiety. Question for you, what does anxiety do to the physical body? It starts breaking it down, it breaks down your immune system, you start catching everything under the sun, it, it, it messes with the biology of you. It literally undermines your ability to be a healthy and a whole person. Tells my pessimism kills. Now, I'm gonna ask, put the, put the banner up, the, uh, uh, the quote up for me real quick, if you would, please. I want y'all to see this quote, okay? This quote, by holding a positive and optimistic word in your mind, you stimulate frontal lobe activity. This area includes specific language centers that connect directly to motor cortex responsible for moving you to action. And as research has shown, the longer you concentrate on positive words, the more you begin to affect other areas of your brain. Literally, you may be giving yourself brain damage. Your words are causing brain benefit or brain damage. And that's a study, I want to give you, I think the guy's name, Newberg Wallman. That's a study that said that. I want to show y'all one more flyer here. One more flyer, okay? Because I want y'all to see this. This was a scientific test that some of you may have heard about, okay? This was a scientific test. This is what scientists did. They put water in vials, and they spoke words to water, and this is what they saw the water become under a microscope. On the left-hand side there, the pretty crystal you saw when they spoke to water is when they spoke of love and gratitude, that's what it turned into. When they spoke, when they spoke eternal words, right? Eternal words, words about God, words about the things of God, words about a future hope, that's how it crystallized. When they spoke to the water, bottom right hand side, thank you. When they spoke thank you, look how beautiful it came. Now, bottom left, this is what happened in the water when they spoke evil to the word, bottom left. All they did was spoke words to water, and this is what they saw under the microscope. Top right, when they spoke, you disgust me, 
All they did was say these words to the water and look how nasty and discombobulated it is. Now, this is, a, this is the same water under the influence of different words. I want you to elbow your neighbor and say, you 60% water. All they did was put water in a vial and spoke these words. And this is what the word, this is what the water became under the microscope. Now, as long as you're looking at it without a microscope, everybody looks normal, right? Everybody looks good until it shows up in sickness and disease. Everybody looks good until it shows up in some kind of bondage or trauma. Y'all got that? This is the result of speaking words to water, and you are 60% water. Ask somebody, what are you saying to yourself on a daily basis? You disgust me. Are you talking about the things you hate about yourself? Or are you talking about how much you love the person God made you into? Come on, somebody. Are you speaking evil, or are you speaking peace? Are you thinking about eternity? Or are you thinking about all the negative things that you cannot control? Y'all got that? Do you say thank you for anything? I want you to ask your neighbor, do you say thank you for anything? This is, the most, this is the most ungrateful generation I've ever seen in my life. Because people don't even say thank you for things that benefit them. How do you think this gets done? How do you think this gets done? Say thank you. Y'all got that? You're complaining about something somebody's praying for. All right, let's move on. The negative repercussions of pessimism. Number two, number two. So the first thing, say it with me, pessimism affects the cells of the human body. That's just science. That's just scientific fact. It negatively affects the cells of the human body. Y'all got that? Number two, you make yourself undesirable to be around. <laughs> Raise your hand if you like being around negative, pessimistic people that always complain about. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. All right. I ain't got no friends, I stay to myself. Cause you suck at friendship. Y'all got that? I don't need a man, it's just me and Jesus. You Jesus in that thing in that drawer. Simone, where you going? Simone, where you going? I don't need a man, you need something shaped like a man. If you are negative, listen, I want to tell you in a loving environment, if you are negative, meaning that the only thing your conversation is comprised of is what's going wrong, what you don't like, what you don't, I can't take no more of this, right? Don't nobody want to be around you. Well, they are. They have to be. Some people meant their vows, but they didn't mean your abuse. Y'all got that? Negative people drain you. They drain you. They drain you. Number three, you incapacitate your ability to believe in your goals. If you are pessimistic, you will find a way to undermine your goals. You don't believe in your goals. See that? I'm, I'm going to get my degree. But then on Monday, oh, Lord, it costs so much. I don't know how I'm going to do all this. And then God says $4.19 a gallon. And now you decided you wanted to further your education. You decided that it's a sincerely held goal. You, you set a worthy goal. And then you use words to nullify your resolve to go toward them. 
No, the only thing I don't like about this school, I got to drive clear across town. You have driven across town for worse. <laughs> I don't get some of y'all. I don't get some of y'all, right? Because y'all are, y'all are complaining about driving across town for something that benefits you, right? But if something is 25 cents cheaper... It's something you already got. You got five of them. But you driving clear across town for something 25 cents cheaper. <laughs> Number four. This is the problem. Somebody shout, this is the whole situation. If you are pessimistic, you create emotional weights that eventually collapse your soul. be dealing with nobody that is the weight of your words that you finally collapse under the weight of your negativity y'all got that I just want to be by myself I don't want to be dealing with church people right finally collapse you finally collapse right it ain't us it's what you keep saying about you say people are people no matter where I find people. Y'all got that? You don't need better people in your life. You need better skills to deal with the people that are in your life. Who am I talking to? Tell somebody you don't need better people in your life. You need better skills of dealing with the people that are in your life. Tell somebody else. Tell your new neighbor. Say, new neighbor. Jacob, you better fire your neighbor. Uh, tell, tell you to say, new neighbor. You don't, need, you don't need new people in your life. You need, you need better skills for the people that are in your life. I want you to ask somebody else. Find a new neighbor. Say, neighbor, what are the people you love putting up with from you? Oh, nothing, because you're just an angel that does nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Your poop don't even stink. You go to the bathroom and smell like roses, just all out the bathroom. Isn't that right? Just roses. Just roses. Come on, ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, what are the people you love dealing with from you? Now, some of you right now, you know the sad part of this message, that's the first time you even care to think about it. I want you to ask somebody, are you healthy for the people around you? Oh, I'm getting messy now. Are you healthy for the people around you? Are you the reason somebody's blood pressure is up? Are you a source of tranquility or torture? Are people glad to see you come or glad to see you go? Are you a health risk? Now, the problem with, the problem with being a health risk is that many of us were raised by people that were a health risk. So we think it's normal being this dysfunctional and bad for an environment. And the problem with many of us being stuck where we are right now is that you are now 42 thinking this way is normal. That's the problem, is you grew to believe that it's normal to have a wrong perspective and to only give voice to the things you disapprove and don't like and deserve. That's your selfishness talking. And you think it's normal to never find anything good to say until somebody's birthday. And then you didn't say it, the car did. Somebody else's most clever words were on that. Turn over to Numbers chapter 13 real quick. I want you to know that if you're negative, pessimistic, always complaining, I want you to understand that there are some people that love you that you are torturing.
Near, uh, Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. The Lord spake to Moses and said, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I gave, which I give to the children of Israel. Somebody shout, it's already theirs. Somebody shout, the moment God said it, it belonged to them. He's already theirs. Y'all got that? Of every tribe of their fathers shall you send the man, everyone a ruler among them. Y'all got that? Now, look down at chapter, look at chapter 13, same chapter, verse, verse 17. Okay? Numbers 13, 17. So notice the instructions say God said. This is my challenge with this whole text we're reading here because I think we've been reading over it. I don't think what God said and what Moses said were the same thing. Don't. I don't think it was the same thing. And I know that they were rebellious and I know that they were cantankerous and I know that they were resistant to leadership. But even as a leader, you've got, you got to be careful how you communicate things to people. Because you could be the source of a person's hope being robbed through your influence. Now watch this now. So God said in Numbers 13, 1 and 2, send them to search through what I have given to them. Y'all got that? All right. Now, now, Numbers, let's see what Moses said to them. Moses sent them out to spy out the land. All right. Uh, I don't think a search and a spy are the same thing. There are spies in the United States from China right now, right? They don't belong here. This ain't their land. They're trying, they're trying to, they're, they're, they're doing something subtle to get something that don't belong to them. Y'all got that? All right, now watch this now. Get you up this way southward, go to the mountain and see the land, what it is, the people that dwell there, whether they're strong or weak. God did not tell you to go find out if anybody's strong or weak. Few or many. God never said, see if it's a lot of people or a few people. And what the land is they dwell in, whether it's good or bad. Why would it be bad if God promised it to you? In the cities they dwell in, whether there are tents or in strongholds, whether the land is fat or lean. Y'all got that? God never said, go see, if, go see if, it, if it's a land opportunity or if it's a desert. God promised it to you. God gave it to you. Somebody said, it's got to be good if it came from God. What he said affect how they searched. Y'all did not hear what I just said. What he said affected how they searched. So I can't fully put the blame on the 10 that didn't have a right narrative. Because they had a leader that didn't just tell them, hey, listen, God's already given it to you. I'm going to show y'all what the objective of God was, right? God had already given them the land. What he wanted them to do is go, and go count how many rows, right? Why? For, uh, watch this now, Naphtali, Joseph. God said, describe the land so that we can divide the land by portion to the people it belonged to. Those are two different narratives. And we love to jump on the 10 that had a negative report, right? But I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm going, they got more information than they needed. They got more information than they needed. And sometimes too much information is what immobilizes you. And some of you right now, you got too much information and you're in information overload and it's immobilizing you. You know way too much about what God told you to do. You need to do just what God said and you don't need any more information about it. Tell somebody you just educated yourself into disobedience. What do you mean? Because now you're thinking about things. All God wanted you to be thinking about is, man, I, that's mine over there. That's mine. I'm believing God for that. I'm believing God for that. Right? That's mine over there. Oh, the, 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 the lions have fallen for me in pleasant places. So that's all they were supposed to be looking for. 
what was already theirs. Y'all got that? You know why? Why the fall of man happened? Because one person got way more information than God gave. Adam, don't eat of the tree in the midst of the garden. Somebody shout, that's it. They thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. One simple instruction. Now, God also, got, God also gave man all the trees of the garden to till and to keep. God never said he couldn't touch that tree. God said that he had to till a tree he could not use for his own benefit. That's your tithe, by the way. God said it's mine even when you touch it. How can you till and keep something you can't touch? You know why Eve thought she couldn't touch the tree and why Satan used that extra information to deceive her? Because her husband told her, knowing you, I got to give you extra information. He set her up for failure by not just giving her what God said. So he told her, because you know, you know her, you know Eve, said we can't eat it and you can't touch it either. And that was not the instruction. The instruction was you shall not eat it. Say it with me. I cannot till and keep what I cannot touch. How can I keep it trimmed up if I can't touch it? All the trees were his to trim and to keep, including that one. Does that make sense? Sometimes extra information is just the information you don't need. Ask somebody, what did God say? See, we want to get into the statistics about things. We want to get into what's going on in the, in the neighborhood and what's going on in the country. We want to look at the interest rates. What does interest rates have to do with what God told you to do? Yeah. Too much information for the move of God. What did God tell you? Move on that. Then you go over to mom and them house who want to make sure you stay trapped in rent. Are you sure you're going to be able to afford that? No, I had a house when I was young. You know, now when you own a house, you know, you got to pay for stuff that break yourself. And then don't you got a car payment? How you going to make a car payment and a house payment? I used to have a car payment and a house payment. How you going? How you going to do all that? Have you prayed about it? Tell somebody prayer don't make you that weak. Y'all got that? Because you know you heard God, then you go over there and listen to unbelievers about what God said. And then you start considering factors that got nothing to do with what God said. Y'all got that? God told you to go somewhere, you want to be looking up statistics. You don't need statistics, you need obedience. You need courage. Be bold and courageous. Y'all got that? Because you can information your way out of obedience. Y'all hear what I'm, you get information your way out of obedience. And you know what happens a lot of times? With just, with too much information, you start imagining things to be harder than they actually are. Y'all got that? All right. I'm finna lose weight. Now you gotta look at 10 plans. Any, any. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna show y'all lose weight. I'm going to show you how to lose weight. Stand up since you called me over here. This is how you lose weight. Y'all ready? Tell somebody, spin and walk fast. All them programs work. But I'm doing research. You stolen. You're trying to give yourself enough information to not make 
definitive action. See that? I'm praying for God to show me which gym to go to. I'll tell you, he said, I won't. All right, let's move on. See, if I make it harder than what God said, I don't have to do anything. I said, like, what did God say? Now, keep saying what God said. Keep saying what God said, and then you will see what God said. Y'all got that? Only what God said. Only what God said. All right, let's move on. Okay? So the, the result of negative reporting. Look at Numbers 13, 25, and I'm almost done. All right? I'm almost done. It take you longer to burn stuff on the stove than I'm be done with this mess. <laughs> the result of negative reporting. And they returned from searching the land after 40 days. They went and they came to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back the word and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation showed them the fruit of the land and they told them and said we came into the land where you sent us and sure enough it flows with milk and honey this is the fruit of it nevertheless there's some strong people over there that dwell in the land the cities are walled up notice highlighting the difficulties highlighting the obstacles highlighting what blocks them highlights highlighting what will keep them from what god already gave them Highlighting what will keep them from what God already gave them. They're highlighting what will keep them from what God already gave them. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Remember you told us to find out if there was any strong people? We found them. See that? Remember you told us to find, find out if there was anyone stronger than us? We found them. If you keep looking for something bigger than God in you, you will always find it. But if you believe that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, you'll find yourself overcoming every challenge that ever comes into your life. Y'all got that? I don't believe the challenge. I believe God. I don't believe the news. I believe God. Y'all have seen this over and over again if you've been at this ministry any length of time. Right? We're going into a pandemic. We're not. We're going into a recession. We're not. God keeps saying to me, don't let my people believe that has anything to do with them. Y'all got that? And every single time something crazy going on in the world, y'all turn out just fine because I'm instructed to believe, to get you to believe what God said, no matter what's going on out there in them streets. Y'all got that? My life will never be affected by the negativity going on in the world. My life is in his hands. Say it with me. My life is in his hands. Say this whole thing could fall apart. And I'll still be kept by God. This whole thing could fall apart. I don't even care. I don't even care. Because you, you know how expensive it is to live in Tampa? Why do you keep saying that? Why do you keep saying that? Why do you? I know why they said. Why do you keep saying it? Say my income, my income. far outpaces inflation. inflation. Say it again. My income, my income. far outpaces far inflation. inflation. Inflation is here. My income is here. I know why they say it because they're in fear, doubt, and unbelief, and they don't have a father who is a sovereign in their life. Why are you saying it, though? It's so expensive to live here. Tell somebody, your gifts say otherwise. Your gifts say otherwise. Your gifts say otherwise. See that? 
All right. So turn over to 14, chapter 14, Numbers, verse 1. This is my last verse, I think. Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. I just been crying and crying and crying. The price of pessimism. The price of pessimism. Your outlook got your eyes leaking. <laughs> and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel, oh, here we go, murmured against Moses and against Aaron, speaking against leadership. And the whole congregation said unto them, I just wish I would have died in the land of Egypt. Or would to God that we have died in the wilderness. What they don't know is they're already dead. How do you know they're dead? Look at their testimony. Your testimony tells us whether you're alive or dead. Some people are already dead. You just listen to the words coming out of their mouth. They've already died. There are some dead people in this room right now. All you got to do is have a conversation with them and you'll discover who they are. Wherefore, as the Lord brought us up into this land to fall by the sword and our wives and our children should be a prey, were we not better for us to return to Egypt? And they, now watch this. And they said unto one another, we just need new leadership. See, what it is, I, I can't find the blessing here. I got to find me a new church. <laughs> Let us make a, a captain and return unto the land of Egypt. You ain't make the captain you got. <laughs> you didn't make Moses your leader. God did. Y'all got that? And normally, when people are, when people's soul collapse under the weight of their pessimism, ooh, they can't wait to drag somebody else down with them. Normally, when people's soul collapse under the weight of pessimism, they find the person nearest to them to drag them down with them. See that? I ain't going down by myself. Anybody ever try to save somebody drowning? Anybody ever try to save somebody drowning? What almost happened? They like the... Now, isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? that you trying to save a drowning person and a drowning person almost killed you? I just described some of the marriages. Isn't it something that you tried to save a drowning person and a drowning person, right? A drowning person almost killed you trying to save them. And that's exactly what happens when you're pessimistic. You collapse under the weight of your own soul and then you start pulling people down around you because you're drowning. Well, it got to be you because it can't be me because if it's me, I got to change. And I don't want to change. Y'all got that? So literally, if that's how you are, I hope you found yourself today because the same way you've chosen a mentality that keeps you pessimistic, you can choose mentality that makes you optimistic. You understand that? Faith, hope, and love. These three abide. Amazing that the summary, most important things come out of that text. Faith, hope, and love. What are you believing for? What are you in expectation of? How should you be while you wait on it? Faith, hope, and love. What do you believe in God for? What, what, is, what is in your future that you cannot wait to experience? And then love. How should you be while you walk through the process? See those three things? Are in faith, hope, and love. See that? That's why those three abide. All right? So what happened as a result of negative reporting? Say negative reporting. This negative report... The Bible says, disheartened the people. Watch this. It shifted their mentalities to victimism and blame. They want to blame Moses. They want to blame Aaron. They want to blame everybody except themselves for being too weak 
to believe what God said and to move on what God told them to do. And it manifested full-blown rebellion. Y'all got that? Now, negative reporting. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Says, therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has great reward. All right? Do not throw away your confidence, which has great reward. All right? So negative reporting, this is what it does. It hinders your ability to hear and act decisively upon what God said. Y'all got that? If you are a negative reporter, you begin undermining your ability to be resolved when God is speaking to you. Does that make sense? You weaken your resolve. Number two, it undermines your confidence. Number, number three, uh, number three, it undermines your confidence. Number four, it can put you in a bad state of mind. Fear, blame, accusation, rebellion, all came from negative reporting. All right? It influences your perception. It affects your attitude. All right? It influences decision-making by drawing attention to issues or weaknesses instead of opportunities. Ask somebody, what are the opportunities around you? Come on, ask somebody, what are the opportunities around you? Does that make sense? And many of us right now, negative reporting blinds you to opportunity. I've been looking for a job everywhere. You lying. <laughs> you lying. You ain't been everywhere. And you know what gets me with some people? Number one, you only went out Monday from one to three. <laughs> what you do with the other days of the week? What did you do with the other days of your week? I've been looking for a job everywhere. Asking somebody, are they hiring and waiting for them to go see is not looking for a job. I ain't saying you're lying. I say you're a master exaggerator. <laughs> you ain't been everywhere. Negative reporting can lead to discouragement, skepticism, and or cynicism. Y'all got that? All right, let me give you this and I'm done. How do I overcome pessimistic tendency? Somebody shout, it's just a habit. <laughs> Pessimism is a learned behavior. Somebody taught you what to look for. Some of y'all right now, this is why you don't trust nobody, because of your mama. You don't trust nobody, because somebody taught you everybody is a threat to your existence, and they are not. Somebody taught you to be suspicious of church. You know what? If one more of y'all get in this pulpit and say church people as if you're not church people, I'm going to snatch you down. If you're in the body of Christ, tell somebody that you are church people. Talk about church people like you're a class outside of it. Don't get on my nerves with this. You are church people. Y'all got that? But somebody gave you their slant, their negative bias. Somebody gave you too much information instead of letting you figure things out, find things out, and experience things for yourself. And the problem with it is you bought it hook, line, and sinker, and now it has incapacitated another generation. Just because you're functioning don't mean you're functioning well. Just because you're living don't mean you're living right. So how do we overcome pessimistic tendency? Write this down. I got to trace it to face it. I got to trace it to face it. As I said earlier, pessimism is a learned behavior. It is a learned behavior. Somebody taught you how to see the wrong side of everything. Y'all got that? Somebody taught you that you should complain about everything, even if it benefits you. Somebody taught you the glass is always half empty. Somebody taught you that. All right? Begin practicing gratitude. This is how you overcome pessimism. Begin practicing gratitude. Keep a gratitude journal if you have to. All right, I said earlier, if you don't express gratitude, you're not grateful. Luke 6, 45, from the abundance of the heart, if you were grateful, you would have been talking about what you are grateful for or you would have been giving thanks for something that benefits you. 
you're not grateful, which is why you ain't said nothing about it. Number next, surround yourself with optimistic people. Y'all got that? You know what I found out about optimistic people? They also have no shortage of joy. No shortage of joy. No shortage of peace. Y'all got that? Let hope live in your heart. Let hope live in your heart. See that? You have to let hope live in your heart. This is why I keep saying, only say what you're believing God for, not what you're bothered by. Is this your doctor you talking to? Hello, somebody. Really? Only a few people you should be telling about stuff that's hurting you. Is this your doctor or your therapist? Because if they're not in a position to help walk you to a whole place, that is not a conversation you should be having with them. Y'all got that? Focus on, here's a huge one. Focus on solutions rather than problems. Ask somebody, what's the solution? What? Say it with me. Knowing what I know now, what should I now do differently? See, that's the language of change. Knowing what I know now, what should I now do differently? What's the solution to this? Y'all got that? Clearly doing what I've been doing doesn't get me what I desire to have. Clearly being how I've been being don't get me to well-being. Being how I've been being don't get me to well-being. Y'all got that? If being how you've been being doesn't serve your well-being, you need to be something else. Pretty simple math, right? Confront and cast down negative thoughts. So here's the question. When you have negative thoughts, what do you do with them? Nothing. That's the problem. That's the whole situation. Because you were told to cast down what? Imagination. That exalt themselves against the knowledge of Christ. Y'all got that? If you know Christ, why his joy not living with you in your home? See? If his joy is not there, his spirit ain't there. So it really is about his joy. The fruit of the spirit is joy. The evidence the Holy Spirit is in your life is joy. <laughs> oh, God. The evidence that another spirit is in your life is depression and oppression and weights, emotional burdens sitting on you all the time. That's another spirit. Y'all got that? Number next, decide joy. Say, I can decide joy and I can reach toward fulfillment. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the most important decisions I have ever made in my life. Are you ready for it? I decided I am going to enjoy where I am on the way to where I'm going. Say, I'm going to enjoy where I am on the way to where I'm going. Say, I will enjoy every day of my life. I decide that. I decide that. Y'all got that? And I block everything that wants to counteract that, my intention. I block, I'm block, hello, right? Joy over here, joy. Joy over here, peace over here. Y'all got that? You see, y'all got that? For example, and it's pretty easy now because once you build these kind of standards around your life, there's certain things people don't come to you with. They don't bring foolishness to you. Y'all got that? They're very selective about who they oppress. Limit exposure to negative influences. Limit, limit, say limit. limit. Tell, tell somebody, teach them that you're not the one. You know, I, I, I'll give an example. I had this conversation with somebody recently who has a very negative parent. And, on, and it's a challenge because, you know, you want to honor your parent. But at the same time, you don't want to keep hearing all this stuff they keep saying, right? So I'm going to tell you how to deal with that. Don't raise your hand if your mama ain't here now. <laughs> Tell you how to deal with it, right? All right? So you should honor your parents. You should check on them, make sure they're doing all right, yada, yada, yada. Serve their well-being to the degree that you can, all right? But the moment they start wanting to talk negatively, they want to talk negatively about your siblings. They want to talk negatively, right? The moment they start doing that, change the conversation. To whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever ex If they go back to that, Ma, I gotta go. Well, we don't do that no more, do we? We. 
I'll soon hang up. Y'all see, I'm, I got a rotary dial phone up here. It's a rotary dial phone. <laughs> I was hanging up. Why am I doing that? Tells my hang up. Tells my your phone got an off button. Turn it off. Right? All right. Then tomorrow you call them back like nothing ever happened. How you doing? How's your day? Just checking on you, right? Conversation going along fine. And then when they decide they want to get over there in negative Nancyville, hang up. Have a good day. I got to go. Right? You will teach them how to treat you. See that? Now you're going to get some resist. Oh, you think you the mama? I'm the only one here acting like one, but no. I am being rather parental, right? Teaching you what you should have taught me, right? Here I am teaching you. Hello, you 68. I'm teaching you coping skills. I think I am the mama. Y'all got that? Change the conversation or end the conversation. Reset, change the conversation, end the conversation, reset. They're going to get pretty, they're going to get the clue that you're not open for it. And then you know what they're going to do? They're going to call your gossiping sister, and now they're going to spin up. <laughs> I don't care. As long as y'all bring that over here, I don't care what y'all doing. <laughs> Here's another way. Celebrate victories. Tell somebody, celebrate your victories. Celebrate your accomplishments. Celebrate your milestones. Share your good news. I don't want people all in my business. Share your good news. I don't want people to think I'm, share your good news. I ain't worried about what people think I'm, I'm finna share my good news. Say, sharing my good news is a part of my strategy to publicly express gratitude. Now, she thinks she all that, he, no, no. I just know how to celebrate what God is doing in my life. That makes sense? Don't ever hide your successes from anyone. You ain't got to do all that. No, I talked about a Wednesday night, you know, because you got to guard your anointing. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> all right, I ain't finna get into this stuff these foolish people didn't taught you. All right, let me close with this. Isaiah 52 verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news who proclaim peace, who bring glad tidings and good things, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. How beautiful are the feet upon the mountains, are the feet of them that bring. Tell somebody, make sure you bring in good news. The Bible said that if you bring good news, you have beautiful feet. Amen? Listen, I, I know that I know there's a whole lot of information. I know there's a whole lot of information and I hope you've taken copious notes so you can go back and listen to it. But I'm telling you that you can literally change the entire direction of your life by being mindful about the state of your mentality and mindful about the words that are coming out of your mouth. The lions have fallen for you in pleasant places. God knows the plans he has for you. They are plan of good and not of evil. God's got a hope a future hope and expectation concerning your life. Tell somebody, now I saw your future, and it ain't bad. Stand your feet if you would. Maybe that's someone on the sound of my voice who does not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible said that many have received him and gave power to become sons of God. If you're here today and you're not born again, you've never surrendered your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we want to extend to you this invitation and opportunity to do so. Anyone at all, check your role. Ask your neighbor, are you born again? Come on, ask your neighbor, are you born again? Are you saved? Ask them, are you saved, saved? Are you saved, saved? Are you saved, saved? For in the sanctuary, God is here. There is a sweet Anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. So come, so come, lay down the burden.
that I can grow in the knowledge of God's will. We want to receive you now as a part of manifestation. Anyone at all, I want to be a part of manifestation. Anyone at all, I want to be a part of manifestation. Amen. Listen, also, I don't want anyone to leave here with any weights or oppression on you, any weights, anything just heavily on you. If you need prayer, I'm going to ask our pastors and ministers to come real quick. If you need prayer because you got some things sitting on you, I'm going to ask them to pray for you. There is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. So come, so come lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary. There's a sweet, come on. There is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. So come, so come lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary. God is here. He is here. Pastor Alan Maria, can y'all come and pray for people for me, please? Amen. Dr. Crenshaw, come here, if you would. I need you to pray for some people. Down the burdens you have carried are in the sanctuary. God is here. Salvation. Pray with her to receive salvation. Pray with her. Anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. So come, so come lay down the burdens you have carried in the sanctuary. One more time. There's a sweet There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. So come, so come lay down the burdens you have in the sanctuary. So come, so come lay down 
the boys you have carried in the sanctuary, God is here. God is here. God is here. Speak. Speak, Lord. Speak, God. Speak, Lord. 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 Speak, Speak, Lord. Speak to me. Establish your will in the hearts and minds of your people. And we just declare by faith every yoke is broken, every stronghold is broken. The people of God are positioned for increase. The condition of our minds have been altered to expectation. We thank you right now, Lord, that what you have done in our hearts and in our mind, in our thinking, shall begin a trend of very positive and productive events. Now, Lord, we pray for every person that has come at this altar today, that they will leave every burden they brought, leave it at the altar of God. We declare that they will go away from this place free, full of peace, and full of joy. Now, Lord, as we prepare to leave this place, we ask that you watch over us, keep us, cover us, bring us together again on Wednesday night for Bible study. May your hand be upon the lives of your people. May your face shine upon your people and continue to bring us into that with your purpose concerning our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Don't leave without greeting somebody. Tell them your name. Find out their name. Call them by their name the next time you see them here in church.